Hey everybody, Nick Espinoza, your chief security fanatic here, and today we actually have to talk about the FBI or Federal Bureau of Investigation because they conducted potentially millions of searches on Americans in 2021. Here's what's going on. This is coming from the Wall Street Journal, and obviously this is deeply concerning on many different levels. Now, here's what's up. The FBI said today that they performed potentially millions of searches on Americans' electronic data last year without a warrant, and that is according to this report by U.S. intelligence officials. Now, this annual report that was published today by the Office of Director of National Intelligence, or ODNI, disclosed that the FBI searched as many as 3.4 million, or rather did 3.4 3.4 million searches of U.S. data that had been previously collected by the NSA or National Security Agency. Now, it couldn't be learned from the report how many Americans' data was examined by the FBI under this program, though the Biden administration, their officials, are saying that it's much smaller of a number. They are certain of that, quote-unquote, uh, according to the Wall Street Journal. Now, this disclosure of searches marks the first time a U.S. intelligence agency has published an accounting, however imprecise, of FBI grabs of American data through a section of what is known as FISA, or the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, of of 1978. This is the law that governs foreign intelligence gathering. The section that the uh, that basically of FISA that authorizes the FBI's activity like this is known as Section 702, and it actually expires next year. Now, while the ODNI report did not suggest systemic problems with these searches. Judges have previously reprimanded the FBI for failing to comply with privacy rules. Officials also said that the FBI searches were vital to its mission to protect the United States from national security threats. The frequency uh, of other forms of national security surveillance detailed in the annual report generally fell over one year, and in some cases basically continued a multi-year trend. So the 3.4 million figure is, and I quote, certainly a large number. I am not going to pretend that it isn't, according to a senior FBI official in a press briefing today regarding that report. Now, more than half basically of the reported searches, which is almost 2 million, were related to an investigation into a national security threat involving attempts by alleged Russian hackers to break into critical infrastructure here in the United States. Those searches included efforts to identify and protect potential victims of these alleged Russian campaigns. And again, this is according to U.S. officials and this report. Now, officials, though, declined to give more details on the alleged Russian threat, including whether it was linked to the Russian government or criminal hacking groups or something else. Russia has historically denied accusations of hacking the U.S. and other nations, although the evidence of that is overwhelming. I've talked about that continuously on my radio show and other things. The IOCs are indicators of compromise, uh, basically stemming and coming from Russia, and their cutouts has essentially been proven. Look at the Yahoo case, where we essentially extradited a, a, uh, a Russian national from Toronto, Canada to San Francisco, who hit all of Yahoo, and we learned was paid by Russian intelligence to do that. Now, the number of searches, uh, basically, of American data also doesn't correspond to the number of Americans who may have had their personal information examined. So, an individual's name, telephone number, email address, social security number, which is our national ID for those outside of the United States, can all be searched sometimes repeatedly, and in each instance... Um, each of each of these terms could count as a search, meaning if they looked up my phone number, then they looked up my email address, then they looked up my social security, now I've been searched three times, not just once, which could potentially skew those numbers. So there you go. These searches can also yield a mix of metadata and content collected uh, basically regarding communications as well. Not the communication itself, according to the report, but the metadata of the communication, meaning a date and time stamp, maybe my phone number, who I connected to on the other end. And so now now they've got, you know, essentially a pattern of me talking to somebody else or whoever they are surveilling. Now, one source of the discrepancy between the 3.4 million figure and the potentially much lower quantity of Americans' data is simply this. Sometimes FBI analysts perform large searches of hundreds of thousands of terms, and if just one term in that batch of hundreds of hundreds or thousands of terms is associated with an American or a U.S. entity, then all of those terms would be counted as a potential search of U.S. data. So in other words, they put in 1,000 different terms and they get a hit on one. Now all of those things are considered part of the U.S. search. 
Uh, the FBI conducted approximately 3.39 million searches using the identity of a presumed U.S. person from December uh, 1st of 2020 through December 30th of 2021. So basically a year, according to this report, and the number of searches for the previous 12-month period was 1.3 million. So this has been essentially exploded like two and a half times or so, and obviously that is a concern as well. Now, some congressional lawmakers have also asked the FBI to disclose how often it taps into that data to look for United States-based information, arguing that doing so amounts to a backdoor search on Americans, and that obviously dispenses with requirements to obtain a warrant, meaning if I am suspected of something, law enforcement, whether it's local or federal, should have to get a search warrant, basically proving to a judge that I should be involved in a search or they should search me for some reason, and if they don't get that warrant, Legally, they shouldn't be able to search me, but here we are. Apparently, they can. U.S. intelligence officials have broadly defended Section uh, 702 of FISA as among basically one of the most valuable national security tools at their disposal. Now, if you didn't know, this is actually related to the previous president as well, because Congress last renewed Section 702 in 2018, and then President Trump signed that renewal into law. But he also, after um, basically, uh, or rather before he signed this, he was openly questioning the measure over unsubstantiated concerns that it was used to spy on his presidential campaign. It is set to expire again, uh, basically at the end of next year, and current and former intelligence officials have said that they basically anticipate a political battle and for obvious reasons. Now, in that vein, uh, from what I understand from previous reporting on that, apparently there were um, some Russian nationals that were being surveilled in Trump Tower in New York City, and they had apparently obtained a, a 702 authorization under FISA to essentially monitor those people, and I believe that was equated uh, to that. Obviously, I'm sure I'm going to get some Trump fans out there that say, Nick, you're an idiot. This is actually what happened. I am not going to debate that. That is what I am remembering, so... There you go. But I believe that was the tie-in to FISA 702 and President Trump. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But I, 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 pretty, I, pretty, I keep up on these things pretty well. Now, also, for the record, this report also does not allege that the FBI was routinely searching American data improperly or illegally. But obviously, you can take what you want from the information I just, just delivered to you, courtesy of the Wall Street Journal, who had an excellent write-up on this. And with that, I'm going to sum it up quoting directly, and I've been heavily paraphrasing the Wall Street Journal, but I'm going to quote the Wall Street Journal directly right now. Because I think this is something we should all consider. And I quote, Friday's report also revealed four instances last year in which the FBI, due to specific factual considerations about a search of data, should have sought approval from the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court or FISA court before performing a search and looking at the content of U.S. communications that were produced. The FBI has never sought approval from the court since that requirement was adopted in 2018, according to officials. So they are supposed to basically seek approval. They haven't been, and it's been about four years. And please like, share, follow me here on Facebook and Twitter at Nick AESP. And please feel free to subscribe to me at YouTube as well, all of which apparently can be searched warrantless by the FBI. And as always, stay safe, stay online, and please stay private.